Segment four, health care. This past spring, just after the passage of the new health care legislation, let's call it Obamacare, I interviewed you for the Wall Street Journal. You said, quote, it's a bad bill. Health care in the United States does have a number of weaknesses. Mm -hmm. This bill doesn't address them. It's going to increase health costs, not contain them. Increase costs. Why? Well, there are a number of things in the bill that are cost increasing. I'll start with one major one. Uh, we had 45 million people who didn't have health insurance. Mainly these were young people. These weren't sick people. Couldn't get, although a few of those, but they were mainly young people who made a calculation. They're pretty wealthy and they didn't have it. Okay, we brought them in. Now, there are ways to bring them in that I might have supported, but we brought them in in a very bad way. Instead of giving them a minimal catastrophic health care plan, which is one that could make some sense, we gave them a pretty, we require them, not just gave them, require them to have a pretty generous plan. And we raised the poverty level for which they would get subsidized Assistance. by the government from simply the ordinary poverty level to like three times the poverty level. I don't remember the statistics now in my mind, but it was something like that. That's going to be a big uh, 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 force expanding overall medical spending. Secondly, one of the weaknesses in the American health care system, it's too employer-based. Employers get subsidies for providing insurance. We're one of the few countries in the world that have ma mainly an employer-based uh, insurance system. Instead of sort of taking that away, which would have been the right approach to do it, we expanded it. In fact, we've ta we, we now institute a system where we're taxing small businesses if they don't institute a health care bill. Now, I hear from some small businesses, they'll prefer to pay the tax right. than do it because they're obligated to have an expensive plan that they'll be liable for. But that's another uh, cost-increasing one. We did very little, if anything, to reform Medicare other than maybe having a lot of rationing and so on in Medi Medicare. What we should have done is made individuals responsible for a larger out-of-pocket share of their total expenses at all levels, including Medicare levels. Switzerland, my favorite example, Switzerland has on average 30 percent of total medical expenses are out-of-pocket. That is, they're paid for by the individual, either in terms that they take a big deductible or they have a big co-payment. The U.S. average at the t before the passage of the bill was around 12 percent. The bill doesn't change it in any significant way. Gary, whether Republicans win or not in the election, this fact that we heard over and over and over again during the health care debate will remain a fact. We spend about 17% of our GDP on health care. The next most costly health care system, that of France, and then Switzerland comes third, are both about 11%, dramatically lower. What's going on? Well, there are a couple of things that are going on. One, we're giving people access to treatments that they don't act, get access to in France and Switzerland. So if you're an older person, now you can, uh, we, we say, well, they're, they're putting a big value on their life. You know, the French and, and the Swiss and a number of other countries are pretty callous when they're dealing with older people. They say, well, you don't have that long to live, and you know we're not going to. So we actually pay. get something for the extra amount that we're I paying. I think we do. I think we do. I mean, I think there are a lot of strengths in the American system. We've been the major innovator. They ride off of, particularly countries like France, ride off of innovations produced in the United States, and we're we're paying for that. So you look at most of the R and D in the medical area. Uh, from penicillin 80, 80, and the, after the war yeah. right through to the present time, it's yeah. happening here. It's happening here. So we've been a major innovator. In fact, because of the restrictions in Europe, a lot of the re, uh, research of drug companies that are based in Europe, but they sent their research into the United States for a variety of reasons. So we're, you know, we, we're producing a lot of the innovations, and we're giving greater access to the new drugs and so on. Well, that's expensive to do it. Is it worth doing it? A lot of it is worth doing. In my judgment, mm -hmm. I think people are willing to spend a lot uh, for even small improvements in their life expectancy, and uh, small reductions in the probability they're going to die in the next year or so. That's expensive, uh, but we're doing that. Uh, our system, as I said, is not perfect. I mentioned we'd like, I should, we should get rid of 
the employer-based health care. We should have people paying a bigger out-of-pocket share. But it would be a mistake to say everything about the American system is bad, and that's why we're spending so much. We're allowing people, we're giving people access to a variety of treatments that they cannot get access as readily in other countries. And I think a lot of that's good. When I interviewed you in the spring, you said repealing this bill will be very, very difficult. Now, even if Republicans win at the upper end of what some predictions now suggest they might win, they won't have the two-thirds votes in either house that they'll need to override presidential veto. As a practical matter, they won't be able to repeal Obamacare. So what, what, what should they do? I think you can make changes. You're not going to repeal Obamacare. Mm -hmm. I think that's the thing you have to accept. And when crunch time came, Probably a lot of Republicans wouldn't vote to completely repeal Obamacare. But you can push it back in various areas. For example, you can try, I mentioned one of the, I think, mistakes of the bill, weaknesses of the bill, cost-raising aspects of the bill, is that for these 45 million people or so who are being brought under, uh, provided with health care, you can scale back the a fraction of those people who have their care subsidized. Uh, you can scale back the magnitude of the ca minimal care that you are providing, make mm -hmm. it sort of covering ca catastrophes, what a lot of people would like to be protected against. So if I have no health insurance and I, have, I get cancer and I go to the emergency room and I get treatment, I have to stay in the hospital, the taxpayer is paying for all that. Right. So you want people to have some catastrophic care so you try to push in that direction, and then you say only the you know people who are, who have really low incomes will be the ones we're subsidizing. Other people have to pay for it themselves. That would have a uh, I think a, a beneficial effect in reducing the amount spent. It'll give you a more efficient system. You, another thing you can do, and which I didn't mention before, mm -hmm. you can allow people in one state to buy insurance from companies in other states. There, nothing in the bill speaks to that issue. That's something I think maybe you could get the, uh, the president to go along to with. Sign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he would sign that. And uh, uh, So there uh, are a, a few other things that I think you could do. So I would say let's not think of it. If I was running the Republican Party, which thankfully I'm not, <laughs> what I would say is let's not think of a, you know, uh, throwing the o Obamacare out. Let's see if we make it work significantly better. So maybe... I keep doing this, maybe we end up with something that is better than what we had before. That's mm -hmm. the way I would approach right. it.